Hello and welcome. In this video, we will show you how to use the eMammal desktop application to identify and upload your photos. Once the pictures have been imported and you filled out the electronic data sheet, the app opens up and displays the sequences and the individual pictures in each sequence, which we can then identify. We can verify which deployment we are working with by checking here. If we wanted to upload a different deployment when we're done, we can select it from this list. You can edit the deployment information by clicking here. We can monitor our progress using these status bars here, which will show how many sequences have been identified and how many have been uploaded. The application organizes photos into individual sequences. Recall that the camera takes a series of photos each time an animal triggers the camera, either some multiple of five or three photos, depending on the camera model. This series of photos at each trigger is called a sequence. Each sequence is displayed on the top film strip here. This example has a total of 15 sequences. You can cycle through the sequences by using the keyboard command control shift arrow. When you select a given sequence, all of the photos of that sequence are displayed in the lower film strip. You can cycle through those images by using the arrow keys. Scroll through the pictures to see what species set off the camera. Then select the species from the menu on the side. We identify the species on the sequence level, not the individual image level. If you do not see the species in that list, you can begin typing the common name in the search box. If you choose an individual photo and use the blue button, you can make it larger. You can also favorite the very best photos by clicking this star. Some species are identifiable by their natural markings, like spots, stripes, and antler patterns. If your project is interested in any of these animals, they will ask you to use the ID button whenever you see them. If there are more than one individual, you can change the count here. Remember that we are tagging the animals in the sequence and not in the individual photos. So as we go through these images, we can see that there are only two deer and not 50. If there is a second species, we can add it by clicking the common name button. We can remove tags if we make an error by clicking the red button here. For some species, we may also want to distinguish between male and female and adult and young. For most projects in eastern North America, we will want to distinguish male and female white-tailed deer during the antler season, which is typically between August and February, and juvenile and adult white-tailed deer from May to November. For other species, you can attribute these labels only if you are sure. If you are not sure of the gender or age of the individual in the photograph, please leave it as unknown unless you get other specific instructions from your volunteer coordinator. When using the age or gender categories, input the number of individuals in each category for that sequence. Here is an example of a white-tailed deer where we cannot identify the age or the sex of the individual. So we will say it is one white-tailed deer and not identify the age or the sex. The icon in the corner of the sequence changes from yellow to blue when a sequence has been identified. When you are identifying photos, please pay attention to the following special cases. I am going to review with you the rest of the sequences within this deployment so we can learn how to identify animals within each sequence. 
I enlarge the photo so it makes it easier to see the animals in the picture. We can see to start that there is a white-tailed deer and we are going to continue to scroll through the images to make sure that there is only one and that there are no other animals that come into the frame. Because this individual does not have spots like a fawn and does not have antlers like a male, we can identify this deer as an adult female. Notice as we're going through and identifying these sequences, we can look up at our status bar and notice that the number of sequences that needs to be identified is decreasing while the number of sequences that have been identified is increasing. We have a new species here, which is a coyote. So I am going to label it coyote. However, I cannot tell if it's a male or female or the age of the animal, so I'm going to leave it as unknown. Sometimes you'll get images of parts of an animal and will not be able to tell what kind of animal it is. In cases like these, you can type in unknown and we can select unknown animal. And it looks like there was only one in the sequence. So we're going to leave this as one unknown animal. In this image, we can see several deer. As we scroll through, we see three. And this is a good example of deer that leave the screen. And so if a deer leaves from one side of the screen and comes back from the same side, we are going to assume that it is the same deer. So we are still only counting three deer in this sequence. As we continue to scroll through the images in the sequence, we can see another deer comes by from the same side that two deer left. So we still have three deer in this sequence. However, a third deer comes in from that same side. And so we are going to assume that we have four deer total in this, this, sequences of, this sequence of pictures. We can also tell that none of those deer had antlers. So we have four adult female deer. As we scroll through these images, we can see that this deer actually has spots on its back. That indicates that this animal is a fawn. So we are going to select white-tailed deer and we're going to indicate that this is one juvenile. We are unable to tell the sex of this individual, so we will not include that information. In this sequence, we have two white-tailed deer. One is an adult female, and one is a juvenile. So we are going to indicate such in each the juvenile area and the adult female area. And up at the top here, you can see that we are noting that we had two total deer in this sequence. Our final image is of our camera trapper. And we are just going to scroll through and make sure nothing else was captured. After we've identified all of the sequences, we can press the blue upload button. It gives us several options. You can select one sequence at a time to upload, or only upload sequences that were not uploaded from your previous session, or you can upload all sequences. Then the upload button will appear and you can follow the status below. Once complete, your status bar should show that everything has been identified and uploaded and you can move on to another deployment and start the process all over again. Remember that you can import and identify your photos in the offline mode if internet is not available. However, once you return to internet availability, you must continue previous session on those deployments and upload all sequences.